Hi Team Value, JJ here. Welcome back. Well, today we're going to get into a theme that I've been doing this week a little bit about NVIDIA, the euphoria around NVIDIA. It's now the biggest company in the world by market cap. Is it like the EV bubble of 2021? Is it shaping up like that? As you can see on screen here, it's up 1,100% since the depths of that bear market in 2022. Now, this is similar to Tesla. If we look at the Tesla graph here, it was up 1,300% between March 2020 and November 2021 when it took the inevitable slide down. And it went down quite a lot, 55% it went down. It's down at the moment, still down. So the so the slide down from the heights of over 400, down, down, down to where it is today, all the way down there. And it, it has had recoveries along the way just there a little bit, but really it's continuing that slide down. Now, is NVIDIA like this? Is it going to be like this? Now, if we look at if we look at this this table here of EV companies back, you know, since that time, since that euphoric time, now we're not seeing that in AI companies just yet. There aren't just a huge amount of, say, new SPACs. There was a SPAC boom back then. We're seeing meme stocks again, but there's definitely a vibe out there where AI is definitely euphoric and AI-related companies. Now, if we look at this, and I posted this on social media this morning, or actually I got this from uh, Everything in Money's Paul Gabriel, Gabriel posted this, and you can see that Fisk has just gone bankrupt. And, the, and I think it's probably not the first time they've gone bankrupt, but all of these companies that were that people were very excited about have gone down like 100%, 99, 90s, and Rivian's down 94% since those highs. And yes, some of them have gone bankrupt and some of them were frauds. And this is what happens when there's euphoric times. This is not what's happened with AI just yet. But NVIDIA, as I said, we saw the graph there and we see the hype around it. It's just going up and up every day. It's gone up one more than 1% for a long time. And it's gained a trillion dollars worth of market cap just in the last few weeks around the stock split. It's now 10 to 1, and it looks it looks cheap if you just look at that number. If you're not experienced in the market, you might look at that number and think, well, it's only it's only in the hundreds. It's not, but it's had a stock split, of course. And Tesla, people complain when I posted this on social media on, on an investing group that I belong to, that Tesla's down 55%, and there was still you know argument about whether that was a bubble back then, or that Tesla was the only good company of them, and it, you know, it a lot of bubbles happen because of a grain of truth and Tesla did drive all of this momentum here. So the question is, is it expensive? Is NVIDIA expensive? Is this happening with AI too? Now today I saw this post by Christopher Bloomstrand and he was talking about, well he's a fund manager and he was talking about the, the valuations of the MAG7 at the moment and he went through it. It's an interesting post if you want to see that. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to read that. But he concludes here, Mr. Market is very good at rewarding business success, but to a fault. In the short term, stocks can trade at extreme relative to fundamentals, both on the low side and the high side. At 23 times 2024 20, expected earnings, the market cap weighted S&P 500 is froth with excess and in my judgment, uninvestable. So he's saying that these, the top end of the market, the top heavy end of the S&P 500, and I've made videos about this, that it's really weighted towards the top. And that's happened before in history. If we think of the nifty 50 bubble, if you don't know what that is, go and look that up on Google or or perplexity, us perplexity. I'm, I'm liking that, that at the moment. It's a really good answer engine. Anyway, under the hood, the majority of stocks are not overvalued. The bifurcation between the deer and the cheap reminds me of March 2000. So here's he, that's the peak of the dot-com bubble. So he's saying that, and he talks about NVIDIA earlier on in this piece. From that point, the index had ret has returned 7% per year since back then spending much of the subsequent decade in the red. You can have a extremes of over or undervaluation in the short and even medium term but in the long run the market gets it right 
And he does point out here in the piece about NVIDIA. NVIDIA passed Microsoft and Apple as the largest market cap combined. The three are valued at $9.9 trillion, 21.5% of the entire market capitalization of the S&P 500, which is a lot. The three are today larger than the capitalization of the entire S&P in September 2011, and which was not a market low. The low there after the global financial crisis was in March 2009, so not so long after that, but still he's making the point that this is a big market cap for just these companies. And so that's what some of the opinions are at the moment around it. Now, I saw this video today where somebody from Vanguard, an economist, a strategist from, from Vanguard, was talking about whether he thinks there's exuberance. He did say there's ex exuberance, but is, a, is it a bubble? Let's see what he's got to say. We've done research to say what, how transformative could AI be? And I think it has the prospect to be more transformative than the personal computer. That does not mean, however, and that's for the next several years, that does not mean, however, that markets are not overvalued. I think, I think the U.S. equity market, it's, it's an uneven story. I mean, you have the technology sector that continues to run away, yet that sort of, I would, I would label it euphoria, is not broad-based. And so it can break one or two ways. I think we can see some... So it's not broad-based euphoria, and it doesn't have to be. You know, we look at the EV sector, that was just focused on the EV sector and these emerging tech stocks. We think of ARC. ARK Invest, what they were invested in that went really high and then of course interest rates started going up, inflation, and that really kind of ruined the story and it was a story about you know innovation a five, in a five year time horizon, but the last five years, it's only just positive that fund. So you know these things don't have to be broad based market bubbles. Market bubbles can happen in a sector and even in one stock. Modest deceleration in the tech sector. At some point, that has to come. But if the economy holds up, I think the other parts of the market could catch up, and I think that would be good news for the market. But Joe, do you think we're in a bubble then? Uh, I would be reluctant to say that. Mm -hmm. I mean, valuations in parts of the market. So exuberant, but not a bubble. I mean, the exuberance. You know, irrational exuberance is that book from the early two thousands. I think that's when it was written with uh, Schiller wrote that book and he said he was talking about he coined the phrase or actually he didn't coin the phrase green green span green I forgot his name for a minute Gre Alan Greenspan the the Fed chair back then was coined the phrase irrational exuberance he said there was a little bit the market was a little bit frothy and then it went into the bubble after that so are we is it early days here for AI or are we already in a bubble this guy thinks it's exuberance or it had near historic highs so history would say that we have prospects for lower returns in those segments of the market. But as I said before, Francine, it's not broad based. You have small caps, not nearly as you know, euphoric in that sense as, as part of the large cap names that you've said. It's not on value based companies. Um, uh, and so again, I think it's an uneven picture, um, but I, I, I am concerned of the momentum going solely into technology. So okay, so he was just talking about technology, but obviously in, in video as well. Now, I've reacted to that video. There's more to that video and the next one that I'm going to show. But on Stocks Today with DJ, JJ, not DJ, JJ, that's me. And I've got this channel where I'm reacting to daily news. Because I'm looking at these clips anyway. I'm looking at these videos about daily news. So I thought I'd, you know, share them and react to them at the time. And I've talked about NVIDIA as the next Nortel, which is the next one. And AI stock euphoria will end. So I've reacted to these all if you want to go and see more of these. And I'll put a link to that in the description. I'll be doing, I'm doing daily stock videos over there. Do subscribe over there if you want to. The stock needs some, the channel needs some love, not the stock needs some love. The channel needs some love until the YouTube algorithm finds it, but it's a long haul and you really have to do 50 to 100 videos, I think, before it catches on like this channel. But the next one I want to react to is this guy from Canada who is a fund manager. He's, he's very experienced. He talks about it. NVIDIA in relation to Nortel Networks, which did collapse. If you don't know what Nortel Networks is, it was a tech company that went sky high, Canadian company, and it did take a it took a long time to eventually go bankrupt. I think it was like not no, not that long ago in the in the twenty teens when it went bankrupt, but it did start to get into trouble. 
and this guy compares it to that. And he invested in Nortel and he got out and now he's getting out of NVIDIA and he explains why. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, I encountered this uh, interesting book uh, by Annie Duke called Quit. It's entitled The Power of Knowing When to Walk Away. Mm. Now, I have been uh, uh, positive on NVIDIA actually all the way up until, uh, until last week. And uh, in to which I last. changed my. Um, so just last week, when it's it started, when it started to get away, when it's added a trillion in value, my uh, uh, rating from uh, a hold, actually hold buy, to a sell, and that's because the stock has reached a valuation level uh, which I do not think it can go any further, and there's a number of reasons for that. Well, it could go further if if it is if indeed is getting into a bubble, it can go way more than people think. It's crazy can get crazier is the saying. Uh, first of all, if I can talk about three price reasons. First of all, the the price to book is at uh, rough, roughly about sixty times. Okay, and if that uh, doesn't uh, bother you very much, the price to sales is forty one times. Now, the uh, the PE ratio is forty one times sales so you know in that twenty twenty one period with the EV stocks and so forth and emerging tech stocks that were in in arc it did get to like there was fifty times sales around there and then of course interest rates up that kind of burst that that kind of bubble that was going on there a lot of people still say it wasn't a bubble that the you know high but it's, I think it's dangerous to pay high multiples for that this is not investment advice by the way I'm not giving any advice sell buy advice recommendations or anything about that I'm just you know having a discussion here and you need to do your own research or you know use a licensed financial advisor before you make any investments this is just for education and general entertainment purposes you need to see, seek your own advice is 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 76 now that's on the trailing uh, earnings so uh, this is clearly a a, 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 a graham dodd and cottle stock isn't it as you can see kind of thing you'd want to tuck away in your rsp for the next 10 years <laughs> um so the stock has become actually become a a, 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 a almost like a, a gamble and so yeah, he's talking about he's referring back to the dot com bubble there, where it took ten years to get back. If you invested near the height of the dot com bubble, it took ten years to get your money back. Even with the good companies like Amazon, it took a long time to get back there. So what do you think? Do you think that this is turning into a bubble like the EV bubble? A lot of people don't think that that was a bubble even, especially Tesla, even though it's gone down more than half. It's been cut in half, still going down because of the story of robo taxis and robots. But you know, the next earnings are going to be interesting. And for NVIDIA, is it going to be cyclical? You know, this industry has been cyclical in the past. Will it continue to be or can it keep going up? If you invested now or recently, is that going to be work out as a good investment? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Also, we talk about this kind of thing on, on Patreon, the Art of Value Patreon. If you want to join us there, I'll put a link to that in the description. I do a weekly investing update for Patreon members where I share things that I don't share anywhere else. And also, thanks for watching everybody to this one. I'm going to put a link, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to put a link on the screen to a video that YouTube thinks that you should watch next. And have a look at those previous videos where I've talked about NVIDIA and, and also in relation to Tesla. It's been a theme this week. So thanks to everybody for watching and listening, and I'll see you in the next one.